Hi, today I'm gonna to be talking about all of the books that I read or attempted to read in September. I read nine, but I DNF'd eight, so it's almost even there. Of the nine that I read though, only two, I guess, I would consider um, to be ones that I want to like have on my bookshelves, although I do have one that I'm on the fence about. But to get started, the first book that I read last month is Divine Rivals by Rebecca Ross. I loved this book so much. Basically, it's about two young um, aspiring journalists and it's an enemies to lovers or I guess rivals to lovers story. And it's like if you took the movie You've Got Mail and put it in a World War I, World War II inspired fantasy world, that's what you would have here. So if you haven't seen the movie You've Got Mail, the reason why I say it's similar is because it's a story of these two rivals uh, and at least one of them doesn't realize that they are actually like secret pen pals and it's just the love story that develops between them except rather than sending emails uh, to each other we have magical typewriters that um, allow them to magically send their letters to each other which was really cute and it is so emotional and just beautiful and I love Rebecca Ross's writing um, this is only the second book I've read by her so far but already she's an author that I'll at least try anything that I see that she puts out. But yeah, so I highly recommend this book for anyone who loves like a really emotional romance. But if you're like me, I don't like contemporary books super often. So it being in the fantasy world made it more up my alley, but also in this book allowed for some extra complexity and depth and everything and gave some twists that were really cool. The writing style is beautiful. The characters are not immature. Like a lot of times I feel like whenever I'm reading a romance between teenagers, that's how it tends to feel for me. The fantasy elements of this story are a little on the low side. We have, you know, the gods that are at war and then we have like the magical typewriters. But overall, it basically feels kind of like a historical romance. And then those elements just add that little bit extra kick. The second book that I read in September is The Princess Bride by William Goldman. This was my little fancy edition that I got a long time ago um, and it's beautiful like the I just love this. If you somehow don't know what this is about and like haven't seen the movie and everything, the gist of it is that it is a light-hearted adventure comedy about this farmhand and the daughter of the family he works for, they fall in love. Well, then the girl ends up kind of getting taken by like the duke or lord or something, like one of those nobility of the area because she's like the most beautiful woman around to be his bride. And so then it's the whole story of the main guy going to try to save her and everything. The movie is a classic. I love it so much. I grew up with it and so I don't know if that's why but even though this was enjoyable and I could see how the writing in this led to the movie being made the way it was, I did like the movie better. This did have like a lot of humor and stuff like how the movie did and so I was immediately able to go oh that's why they made it the way they did you know. Um, so that was really nice but I don't know if this is in the movie, but I don't feel like it is. The girl in here, she just becomes like a lot more closed off and I guess kind of pessimistic than she did in the movie. And it made it a lot harder for me to like her and support the love story, I guess. So I wasn't quite able to connect as well with this. But I will say if anyone wants to check it out, it's really short and it is fast paced and fun and hilarious. Um, so it does have those things going for it. Even though this is such a pretty addition, I don't think I'm gonna be keeping this book. The next book that I read is not a fantasy. It's actually a mafia romance book. It's Stolen Air by Sophie Lark. It was fine. Um, it's pretty typical mafia romance stuff. The main girl, she's like the baby of the family and she's kind of kept secluded from like the type of work they do. Like she knows of it, but she's not like brought into it. So she's kind of written in this too good for our world type of way, which is I feel like a pretty common thing that we see. And then 
the main guy is getting revenge on her family because of someone that they killed and so he abducts her and I think is trying to do ransom if I remember correctly at first but uh they end up falling in love and it was fine I finished it uh, and had a good time. The only reason why I actually bought this was because it was at Walmart and it was really cheap and it wasn't on Kindle Unlimited if I remember correctly. So um, I decided to go ahead and give it a shot. But it's rare for me to keep a romance that I read because they feel so similar. Like even if the story is different, like I come away like feeling the same. I have a handful up on a higher shelf. Um, like. I think there's like five different series um, and I've read a ton because I went through a big Kindle Unlimited pace, but they have to have like something that really makes them unique for, and it doesn't even have to be really good, um, but like it has to be unique for me to feel like it's worth having. Uh, sometimes I'll pick like a bad one that's just so strange that I want to have it so that way I can show other people about it. But this one just kind of, felt generic even though it was a decent time uh, so I will be unhauling that one. The fourth book that I read is A Wizard of Earthsea by Ursula K. Le Guin and this is another um, fantasy classic that uh, I've, I had been planning to read for the longest time but I had just never gotten around to it for whatever reason. It's a coming-of-age story so we're following this boy Ged, I think that's his name, we're following him through his life when he kind of discovers that he has magic as a little kid and just up up to, I think it ends at like his young adulthood. But this book was really interesting to me because it left me with such mixed feelings. Like not just at the end, but during the book. For like the first half, I was really thrown off by the writing style. So one thing that I've noticed with like older fantasy books is they have this writing style where you can it has this feeling like it's meant to be kind of something you read aloud to your kids type of thing like it's like a story being told to you and it is really cool but nowadays i feel like it's more common to write books in a way where it's like you're a part of the story like you can kind of implant yourself into it you know i'm not saying one is better than the other or anything but i prefer to feel like I'm a part of the story, I guess. And so that writing style threw me off quite a bit. But for that first half of the book, I held on because I really was intrigued by what was happening. The main character was not good. He wasn't bad, like he wasn't a villain or anything like that. He was just not a likable person. And so you're watching his young life and everything. And the whole time, the thing that kept me hooked was this feeling like, have you ever, um, for anyone kind of older, when you were younger, did you ever like know any little, little kids? And then now as you've gotten older, you see them like kind of either they're almost an adult or maybe they are an adult and you see kind of like where their life has gone and stuff. And it just leaves you with like this sad feeling, I guess because you can remember them when they were like the sweet, innocent little kid. It left, it left me feeling like that. And so I stuck around because I had never really read a book that made me feel like that before. And also because I was like, well, is there gonna be like a redemption or is he gonna like learn some lessons and stuff? So I, I guess you could say I enjoyed that first half. But then after that, um, some plot things happen and it kind of lost that aspect for me and I didn't really enjoy it as much so the writing style and then losing that draw um I did finish the book but it wasn't really one that I felt any need to keep either I didn't own that first book but I did own two of the later ones in the series and I don't think I'm going to continue on with that series but I am happy that I read it. Um, I do want to try to read more of like the classics and everything in the fantasy genre. So it was a really cool experience. The next book that I read is Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This is about a girl named Brie who her mother recently died and she goes to finish up her last two years of high school at this like residential pre-college type of 
high school program. While she's there, she kind of stumbles upon some magical activity and discovers that there's like a secret society of magic uh, users at her school. And she finds out that she's one of them. But in this discovery, she also uncovers a memory that she had lost, hinting at something magical being involved in her mother's death. So she decides that she's going to like infiltrate this order is what it's called um, to try to get some answers. This book was good. I can appreciate it a lot, especially for the age range that it's for. I think she's like 16 and it's a book that feels like it's for 16 year olds. And I think it would be really good for that age range because of the conversation or just the theme that it has of handling like grief and everything. I think it'll be really good for young people that are experiencing that for the first time, you know? And the plot itself is interesting as well. For me, I didn't love it so much. It was a good time, but the main character, some of it is her grieving, I'm pretty sure, but overall her personality wasn't one that I connected with like at all. A lot of her thought processes, I guess, annoyed me or didn't make sense to me. And so when I finished the book, I was like, oh wow, that was really interesting, like for the overall story. But I like immediately, um, I was on Libby and I immediately checked out the second book and was going to start it. And then before I started it, I like paused for a second and I'm like, I don't care anymore. Like, <laughs> I just um, think I got tired of her, I guess. And while I was interested in the stuff going on, there wasn't enough of a pull for me to continue on when I was feeling so lukewarm. That being said, I do still recommend it for others to read. This isn't one that I'm like, oh no, that's not a good book, don't read that. Like, I do recommend it, it just didn't work out for me. The next book that I have to talk about is actually the second of the two that I'm for sure like keeping on my shelves. The first was Divine Rivals, of course. But the second one is Pierre Nessie by Susanna Clark. This is actually the book that you guys picked out for me during my um, TBR prop jar video, and I'm so glad you did. I love this book so much. This is one that it's kind of hard to explain fully what it's about because so much of it is involves like this sense of mystery, I guess. But just to start out, you're following this guy who seems to be pretty much alone in this seemingly never-ending house and it's like full of statues and there's like an ocean there and it it's just a very strange um setting and beginning you start out like what is going on like i don't understand you know but that's about all i feel like i can really say plot wise um it's a lot of mystery the writing is stunning and beautiful and the main character is just like a cinnamon roll like I love him so much. He's just adorable and you just want all the good things to happen to him. The way the author unravels everything was just amazing to me. I realized that a lot of people read a lot more like symbolism and stuff into it than I did about like mental health and things like that. I don't know fully. I took it a lot more just literally. Even the way I took it, it was amazing, but I think Probably if you took it the way that they did, you might be able to get like some, like a whole different type of experience out of it. But for me, this book is like art. Like if y'all have seen the movies Parasite, like the Korean movie Parasite and that movie Mother with Jennifer Lawrence, those type of movies where it's like artsy and weird and confusing, but you're like hooked and just can't look away from like the chaos and whatever that's going on. That's how I felt about this book. This and Divine Rivals are actually two of my favorites of the year, I think. But yeah, so the next book that I read is The Little Prince and it's by Antoine de Saint something. I don't know how to say that, but this is a, I believe children's book. It might be considered middle grade, I'm not sure, but it's a French, book that is pretty famous and I had always heard like really good things about it so I finally got around to reading it it's been on my shelves for forever but it did like nothing for me 
Um, I did finish it because it was an easy read and it was cute, but it didn't have any emotional depth for me. Like, I mean, it did have something that it was doing, but it didn't hit me. And then also nothing that was happening was like fun. So it didn't have that for me either. It had a very kind of like melancholic, I think would be the right word, feel to it. And I think that might be the big thing is that's not really the kind of vibe I look for when reading kind of like those younger books, I guess. One book of, I would say, similar age range writing style um, that I do recommend that's like less emotional, more fun would be Fortunately the Milk by Neil Gaiman. I really enjoyed that one. I didn't read that this month though. That's just one that I've read that when I was reading this, I was like, I liked that better. I don't know why I compared them. I think it's just the age range. But this is about a pilot who gets stranded in the desert. And then he meets a little prince who is from another planet. The conversations that they have, like the, the little prince has a very childlike, I guess, mindset. But that also has like a type of wisdom to it, you know? And it's just about like their conversations and some of the experiences of the little prince. It was just a little too slow and sad and boring, I guess. The next book that I read was Paladin's Grace by T. King Fisher. This is about a ex-paladin who, he's an ex-paladin because his god died and a perfume maker and it's a fantasy romance. But they kind of get wrapped up in each other's lives by stumbling upon an assassination attempt together. So we have like that mystery element that everyone in the book is kind of trying to figure out what's going on. But the strong point of the story is kind of the stories of the individual main characters. The paladin, you know, his god died and then him and the other paladins that are part of his group, they have what you could say is sort of like PTSD, I guess. They can go into like these berserker fits, especially if, you know, they get worked up, like if there's gonna be a fight or whatever, and then they can't really control themselves anymore. Like back when their god was alive, they were precise and could do like what they needed to without harming others and things like that. But ever since he died, it's like they can't really control themselves quite right and that has caused them a lot of emotional trauma and so you know they're struggling with that while also trying to support each other and also trying to see how they can move on because it's been like three years since their god has died and then our main girl she's a perfume maker and she escaped an adulterous and exploitative husband and has like gone on to make this new life for herself and has her own like perfume shop and everything and so she has her own uh, strong insecurities, I guess you could say, herself from her past. And she also has some like pretty um, bad anxiety and she's really sensitive to smell, which is why she does so good in her field, I guess. But so she like carries around coffee beans to help her cover the smells of things. And she struggles a lot to be out in public because certain smells like can uh, trigger things from her past and things like that. But so the two main characters I felt like were written really interestingly and I loved kind of getting to learn about their pasts and see how they overcome the things that they each are struggling with and how they kind of come together and everything. And like all of T. King Fisher's books, this uh, still has her humor, which I love. I will say though, this one has like a little bit more language in it than the other ones that I've read by her. Not a lot, but for anybody that's like wanting something completely clean, this probably wouldn't be one for you, but I would still highly recommend it. It was a lot of fun. I actually think that T. King Fisher does a really good job with fantasy romance stories because this and Sword Heart are both fantasy romance and those are probably my favorite things that I've read by her. Um, I did enjoy a couple of her other things that I've read so far too, a lot, but Sword Heart is my favorite book still so far from her, and this one is pretty up there. 
I'm trying to decide if I'm going to continue though or not because I didn't know until after I read this first book that the series, there's three of them, but they're not following the same characters. They're other romance stories of the other paladins in his group. And I guess it would just depend on my mood. I might be in a mood where I'm like, yeah, I could pick up another um, one of their stories, but I don't know. But yeah, so this is the one that I'm undecided on if I'm going to buy a copy to have on my bookshelf or not. But anyway, so the last book that I finished was Thorn, and that is by Intisar Kanani, I think is how you say that. So this is a Goose Girl retelling, and I had never read any of those before, so I didn't really know anything about the Goose Girl story. But our main girl is a princess, and she gets engaged to this prince. But on the way there, the lady from her kingdom that is traveling with her to keep her company ends up um, having done a deal with this, I guess, like witch, and they switch bodies. So now rather than being a princess, she is a lady, but also basically gets put to work and ends up being like a goose girl and taking care of the geese and stuff when they get to this new kingdom. And you would think that she would like want to fight to fix things and everything, but she had a very abusive childhood and is also kind of scared of men and responsibility and her mom and just sees this as like her ticket to freedom and so she's like i can just have a new life you know but the witch that did this is plotting against the prince who is supposed to marry her and is also going to be using the other girl for this plot as well possibly so my girl's having to decide is she going to take this opportunity to start a new life and have her freedom and everything or is she going to do what she can to save this innocent man and it's very much like a story of finding yourself i guess you could say and it was nice i think it might be a translation i'm not sure and i so i don't know if this is a translation issue or not but something about the writing style made things feel a little bit distant. It also could be the main character though. Like she gave very closed off vibes and that's because of everything that she's been through. So I don't know if it's because of that, like her, or if it's because of the writing style. But while I was interested enough to keep going to see, you know, how things end, when I got to the end and was done with the book, I was like, whew, that's over. So that's not really, a good sign. So I will not be getting a copy of that book. Yes, yeah, so those are the nine books that I finished. I did have eight that I DNF'd. I'm only gonna talk about like two of them because I only really have things to say about those two. But the other six are Kiki's Delivery Service. I was sad about that one. Dragons at Crumbling Castle, Crest Watercress, Hidden Sea, Falling Kingdoms, and the Piper's Pursuit, which was one of the ones from my fall TBR, so I was sad about that one too. But the other two that I DNF'd, I did kind of want to just say like a thing or two about them. One of them was Tender is the Flesh by Augustina Basterica, and I was really intrigued by this one. Um, I had heard people talking about it, and the plot was just like, left field like i had never seen anything like it it's just our world but a virus has gone through basically all the animals that we've been eating for me and so we've had to adapt and stop eating animals and so you might think that that means people would become like vegan or something but no they turn to cannibalism and kind of commercialize it and stuff and it was a very strange read but I would have been okay with that, even though it was kind of weird, except that the writing style was very like old school dystopian story, um, like Fahrenheit 451 and 1984 and stuff. I noticed that these type of books have a style where it's just kind of telling you the world and 
the characters are like blank. Like you don't connect with them about anything. It's like they're nobody and I don't know if that's to make you feel like you're nobody like in the system or something, but it makes these older dystopian books feel to me like it could easily just be like an article or something. Like it doesn't feel like a story. And so I was very bored um, even though what I was reading about was interesting, it wasn't a story to me and that's what I want when I read a fiction book. So I DNF'd that one. This last one that I DNF'd, um, I wanted to talk about because I wanted to see if anyone had some, just some suggestions. Uh, this book was Mortal Follies. I don't remember the author, but I'll post a picture and it'll have it on there. But I was really, really enjoying this book. The time period was really pretty. The writing style was really funny to me. And the main characters, um, like I enjoyed all of their personalities. So I was having a really good time. And the only thing that made me stop was it got to this point where it felt like nothing was really happening in the plot. So it was just like nothing was progressing. So it became a little bit repetitive and everything. And when it got to that point, I was really sad because I had been enjoying the writing style, the humor, the characters and everything um, and the setting. So yeah, I was really sad about that one. So if anybody has read something that they think has those elements, um, that they also enjoyed, let me know. I might give this one another shot just because I did enjoy so many aspects of it. It just started to get unsatisfying with how the plot wasn't moving along. But yeah, so those are all of the books that I read and DNF'd in September. As you can see, I kind of struggle to find books that I love, um, which is why I have become totally okay with DNFing really quick, but that's okay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you had a great time. Bye.